uh, let's talk a little bit about testosterone optimization because I know that oh, yes. topic comes up for you and your audience a lot. I mean, it's, it's on the minds of a lot of guys, especially in today's modern context. So yeah, let's mm. hear it. What's new? Well, I, I mean, I, I think I come from the perspective of a lot of guys approach this particular topic with that in mind of oh, testosterone optimization. And I actually feel the most beneficial thing you can start to do in relation to actually getting the outcome that you're wanting is look at this thing is in your environment, which are poisoning you. So um, elimination of the kinds of bits and pieces that are not conducive to a healthy endocrine, um, endocrine health. So, you know, it's funny you asked this, I'm, I'm kind of revamping my book at the moment on testosterone optimization. And one of the areas um, I'm really taking a, a what's is, is scaring me actually is a BPA. So yeah. um, BPA for those unfamiliar, well, you may have heard, heard some of these very trite um, and cliche throwaway comments, like make sure you're not drinking out of plastic water bottles, make sure that you are uh, not using uh, plastic food containers, uh, make sure you're not touching um, paper thermal uh, receipts yeah. as they have some of these microplastics. And the the most, I, I think the rationale is really important for people to know in respect to, okay, well, I understand that this may have a consequence on my testosterone, but what is what is the logic behind that? Is that these microplastics actually, actually have a estrogenic effect in the body. Yeah. So um, the receptors that estrogen binds to, similarly, the microplastics imitate that. And estrogen, I mean, is the female hormone. And with that comes some of the uh, characteristics that are not conducive to uh, masculine um, expression, uh, namely things like uh, excess uh, fat in the body, uh, breast tissue, tissue gynecomastia. Um, uh, you know, the evidence does say this has a small effect. It's not particularly significant, but, you know, things like infertility down the line, it has contrib contributions to that. It also has contributions to erectile dysfunction as well. Um, overall libido and how you approach your sexuality is also affected. So, uh, yeah, th there's, th there's something to be said about that. Um, I'm, I'm now curious in relation to, uh, again, because this kind of stuff scares me because... Yeah. we're kind of conditioned to believe you know how we're living is perfectly normal and it's not that th there are no negative effects on this so i'm, I'm mm. curious if you've heard yeah. about that and if that's something that you are conscious of in how you live your life i suppose yeah without without question um so i think of it in terms of exactly as you said like um kind of the yin and yang the intake, what I put in my body, because it's not just the estrogenic or anti-androgenic effects of those compounds, which many of them have. It's more also just the, the general load we put on our metabolism. Like we're loaded with chemicals that our body is not designed to process. It's not, mm. I shouldn't say not designed. It's not rigged efficiently to process, right? We don't know what to do with them. And a lot of times what the body does is it takes those chemicals and it wraps them in a fat and it doesn't know what to do with them. So it just stores them as fat. Right. Mm. And then this is actually kind of interesting. Um, so one of the things that I'm involved with is long-term fasting and you'll see when people get four or five, six days into a fast, all of a sudden they're like breaking out or all of a sudden they just feel like they've got like lots of gas going on. They just feel ill. Mm. Part of that is the keto flu, right? When you're kicking into that ketosis state. But the other aspect is they're flushing out toxins because the body's actually burning. And in those fats that the body is burning, a lot of them are packaged with those, those uh, chemicals that the body didn't know how to process. And the other thing that compounds this, and you can speak to this, is the, <laughs> the massive meals that we eat. Mm. We just stuff as much as we can into our bodies and inundate our bodies. Well, that's like just dumping the gas all the way to the floor, right? And wondering why, you know, you're not having good performance mile per gallon or something like that in your vehicle. It's pretty mm. obvious, right? But that being said, we have this kind of compound effect where we're running on an injury, where we have more access to chemicals that really our body is not efficient with that are damaging to our, especially the endocrine system and especially 
with all the anti-adrenergic ones, BPA being one of them, but there's, there's a ton, even mm. in our tap water, you, it's, it's, it doesn't take much. Right. And so, um, and then on top of that, we aren't moving enough. We're not drinking enough water. So the systems we have for flushing are not working. Our digestive system never has breaks, i.e. fasting, right? So we don't get the efficiency. And then uh, on top of that, we're just shoving processed foods in there. And it's like, you're just, you're asking for your testosterone to just die. I mean, mm. it's like, it's like all out war against it is a good way to put it, you know? I, I, I tell you what, I never made that connection between also the acknowledgement that some of these chemicals are tied up in the fat molecules as well. And and I, I think that would be such uh, a crucial, um, what do they call it now? I mean, they call it dopamine fasting, but you know, if you're really yeah. <laughs> hell bent on this detoxification process of your body and ultimately understanding how you can make yourself more powerful, strong, and, and, and just optimize every single nuance of your health, I really think that might be a, a very, very powerful um, ritual almost to go through these prolonged periods yeah. of fasting. Cause you know me, I, I, I love fasting. I think it's such a undervalued tool and um, you know, you're completely right. I, I, to share with you actually a little bit of my experience is the first time I did a prolonged fast when I did um, five days after, I think it was three days. I felt like I was being poisoned. I felt yeah. like I was being poisoned <laughs> because like you say, what, what actually yes. happens is because, because like you say, we, we th th there isn't, there, there, there isn't four or five hours that pass throughout the day where you're not stuffing something else into your gullet and then it's going through that system yeah. and that system it takes energy you know it takes energy to go through peristalsis to start to digest um you know you, you know your food so you actually never give your body the opportunity to look under underneath the bed in the closet in these places where it's got you know rotten food in the gut uh you know pus mm -hmm plaque all these chemicals bound up in these fat molecules and they don't know what to do about it and then yeah. after you start to go through that prolonged period of time where you're not metabolizing uh, where you're not um, digesting food it's it's digesting all that shit all that really nasty toxic stuff that it just hasn't had the opportunity to do and no wonder i felt so bad and it's actually it's actually in an faq that i because the first book i i wrote it was something along the lines of uh, joseph i'm on day two or day three and i just feel god awful what's happening i was like yeah the answer is you're you're poisoned you're, you're being poisoned a little bit here and yeah, you, you have are. to <laughs> you, 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 you have to met metabolize that. You have to flush it out of your system. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's finally out. You finally, you, and, and this could be years, you know, year, I mean, you th think, think back, you know, back to maybe higher education where you didn't have a, this, this, this knowledge, this, this wisdom that you do now about what the body will do to try and, you know, get all this horrible stuff out of your or, or of your bloodstream and only now are yeah. you getting to the point where you can flush out i, I mean i find that fascinating and, and i think um yeah. you know that knowledge is 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 um is going to be really profound for somebody that doesn't know um so i mean, I mean I'm, I'm i'm curious again because I, I i love this topic uh um a lot for, for you yeah. is fasting purely a tool that allows you to optimize your 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 health or do you, do you see it in any other kind of lens i mean i i, I think yeah. one of the reasons for me is that fasting has so many connotations with um you know, spiritual practices as well and I, I, don't, I don't maybe we don't need to open that if you don't want to but i'm, I'm just curious about your experience because you're talking about yeah. four or five days and I, I know a lot of people that oh, will yeah. do two days but they won't push it past that uh one thousand percent um I think, well, the first thing that uh, drew me to fasting was actually, I grew up a Christian and Jesus fasted for 40 days. And yeah. I was always like, that's kind of a long time. I always thought it was kind of ridiculous, but then I actually learned about water only fasting. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, if you look at most major religions, fasting is a huge aspect of, especially in the mystic side, where they're really mm -hmm. getting into kind of the, the further edges of how they describe it uh, linguistically. And they're pushing those experiences, right? Um, fasting is almost always included. And so I think fasting, I think it's kind of in, inherently 
spiritual. I don't know how you can do it without, like if you do a seven day fast, your demons are coming up. Mm. There, there's no way they're not because you're, you're going to dive deeper into your human nature. Cause I think one of the things that is a risk for modern man, that wasn't a risk for um, maybe Neolithic or even like maybe three or 400 years ago is that we forget what we are. We forget, mm. right? Meaning we forget that we make clothes. <laughs> we make buildings. It used to be like, what did you own? It was anything that you could protect with your fists. <laughs> like that's what you owned, nothing else. Mm. And so I think we get, we get a little bit caught up in, um, I think modernity. And I hate that because it's kind of cliche, you know, like, I don't want to bash modernity because I mean, I'm sitting in a comfortable space right now, a beautiful, <laughs> comfortable chair, right? Yeah. But that being said, um, it's the same reason I think uh, endurance is important. It's the same reason I think that um, mindfulness and uh, exposure to cold, exposure to heat, being mindful about your dopamine. We have challenges that um, we, we can tweak things so that we don't really have to use things, use our drives in the way that they're really intended. And I think right. that fasting, when you, when you engage in it, you are brought to a place very quickly where you realize how little control you have over most of your actions. Mm. And it, that's the first thing that made me realize. I was like, Dude, I don't think about eating at all. Yeah. Meaning I even, and I'm saying that as a person who plans meals, like, and knows what I want to eat. I eat pretty specific things, even in that context. I mindlessly, I'll just go to the kitchen, right? But it's like when you're saying no to yourself, and I think that's probably the main takeaway is if you want to have a spiritual encounter, say no to yourself. That's it. <laughs> mm, I love that. It I might love, be a, a little more complicated, but yeah, no. Um, and especially the way that I fast is I typically, I, I like to do water only, but I typically also do coffee. I still like Mm -hmm. coffee throughout it's a nice it's uh it helps me go for longer right because i mm -hmm. still work and i still work out during fasting but um doing breath work sessions sauna sessions and then um, exposure to cold water or ice uh, those are all tied up in it and you just get to different places in your mind when you're fasting it's just a different mental state so yeah i i, I love that i think i think for me to kind of maybe tie in and color a little bit of my experience in you know, this, this, this spiritual angle is um, certainly identification. I think identification for me is a really big thing. We are over identified mm. with um, our, our body, particularly, which I think is maybe mm. um, the last vestige to get to if you're going to acknowledge something bigger than yourself. Of course, you know, there are, we, we talk about general consumer consumerism and, and, and things like maybe addiction, right? And um, yeah, but you know, is, is there a, an addiction or is there a human need that is greater than the need to put food in your mouth? You know, and once you remove that yeah. possibility for a certain period of time, it's remarkable um, as, as poetically, as you said, you know, where your mind goes and, and what you start to, what you start to think about. And it, the, the, I, I think for me, one of the the big things i mean you you started off by mentioning you know jesus fasting in the desert for 40 days and you kind of you hear stories about that and you go no not possible mm -hmm. Espe right. especially especially when you're living in this, in, in this modern world and then you if you are maybe more inclined maybe more open you go oh, well, maybe i can i can skip breakfast maybe i'll do lunch as well well, let's try 24 hours <laughs> right and then you keep breaking right. past these stories that you've told yourself about what you can and can't do and next thing you know you you you've done 5 days and right you're not the same person afterwards after having that experience and um yeah. i i don't know if you know um just just for the people who maybe again are cynical of this idea there is a doctor i think his name is dr goldman or goldberg forgive me uh, if i'm getting this wrong alan alan goldhammer dr. goldhammer goldberg. yeah you know who i'm talking That's about man yeah he, yeah the true nurse clinic he supervises water fasts up to and sometimes beyond 40 days 
and this <laughs> is real it. this is happening now yeah. there's probably somebody yeah. doing it right now on day 40 as we speak you can do yeah. this it is completely feasible and when i heard about that because I, I think i watched the documentary and I, I i think he's uh what he's promoting is absolutely fascinating and He's helping yeah, so many absolutely. people, hard addiction, you know, of course, type two diabetes and all these other, um, maybe met metabolic diseases. He's yeah. doing some real amazing stuff and people are getting better, a lot better. It's incredible. Yeah. And I think, well, it's like you spoke to earlier that the body is a lot of times the way through, right? In and through the body in some ways, because when you start to address bodily dysfunction, you actually, you can't help but get to deeper levels of understanding or of experience. And so by taking care of your body period, you're actually diving into the work of spirituality in some ways. And so I think I can't even imagine what it would feel like to come out of a, yeah, 21 day fast, you know what I mean? 30 day fast. But that was uh, later on this month, we're taking a trip. Um, but the other option for a different trip was that we were going to take two weeks at the True North Clinic and try a two week fast. Um, and the reason being actually is because I really feel like they do a great job monitoring blood levels. Mm -hmm. I wanna, I want that data. I really wanna look at that. Would, and uh, also what? they're expert at- They're gone. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, please, so, please Well, they're expert going. at re refeeding. That was the key that, mm -hmm. um, that was really important for me to learn. So if you wanna get into fasting, highly recommend if it's past three days, you need to learn about refeeding and refeeding syndrome because mm. you can do it wrong. I, I did it wrong one time and it was oh, awful. I fasted for, I think it was six days with a buddy. And then it was just, you know, we were being dumb and we, I was like, man, I'm so excited to eat. And then as soon as you, you're decided, like, here's our time when we will eat. When you get to that time, you're ready. You're so yeah. hungry. Yeah. And I just was like, we got home and we had intentions to make this broth and like, you know, make it, uh, make it like it's supposed to be where you refuel your body with what it needs. You pace yourself, you're slow, mm -hmm. you're particular. I just went straight for the Nutella <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and cookies. And I got so uncomfortable. So I highly recommend do not do Goodness. that. Don't do that. Yeah. Drink bone yeah. broth. <laughs> Just, just, just a little the, the sidebar to that is again, if you're you're thinking about this. By the way, I'd be fascinated if you do go to get, you know, to for you if you could share that data with me because I think what he's doing is absolutely, absolutely fantastic, and I, I'm I'm such a big fan. Um, is that when you are going those kinds of milestones, your digestive system kind of shuts down. It like it it yeah. like atrophies a little bit because it's all organic muscle. Yep. It's all it's all smooth muscle. Yep. And, you know, if you, and again, I'm not naive to the, um, you know, feeling in that state. And I'm sure nobody else would be. You haven't eaten for four or five days. Of course, you're going to put anything you can. I mean, I, I imagine, um, I'll, I'll share the story in just a moment. But um, you, you, you have to pace yourself, like you're saying. You have to slowly start to just stimulate the digestive system, wake it up. Otherwise, again, you can really hurt yourself. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say after, I think it was three days fasting, the, and I tell people this all the time, the best meal I've ever had in my life was a boiled egg after those two mm. days. Oh, the, yeah. Like, it, oh, it could yeah. have been a five, like a, a three-star Michelin restaurant, and yeah. it would have not compared to the feeling that you get. And, and again, talking back to spirituality, the gratitude that you actually have for food, mm. the appreciation. Yes that you can have just a simple boiled egg and it can be almost orgasmic. That's the feeling I would describe yeah. it as. 